In the previous video, we have refactored our code so that now we have encapsulated the logic behind the procedural generation inside our terrain generator and biome generator classes inside those objects. Now, I would like to modify those by implementing our own purely noise value calculation. Again, I will use this understanding purely noise article, which will be linked in the description as the base. And at the bottom of it, we have an example of a uh, working with octaves uh, when using Perlin noise. And what we can see here is that we have the different parameters, the amplitude and the frequency. And those values are a bit different than what we use in our Unity project. But basically the idea here is that we take the default value of our noise, what we currently have, and we will generate a different values by dividing the amplitude by half, currently we do not have any amplitude, so it is one. So we're generating the landscape that is more in the middle, so near 0.5 values, and with a higher frequency, so the um, hills and valleys are more often. And as you can see, we start with one big hill, then we have multiple smaller hills, then we are going from hill to valley, from hill to valley, and at the end we have almost a straight line. And the idea here is that we can add all of those purely noise values to generate our output, so our noise graph or our noise value, that will generate us a bit more interesting looking landscape with a lot more details compared to the previous example. Now, still you can see that this doesn't have a lot of plateaus where we could, for example, build a city or start a base. And to achieve the plateaus, I would like to use a bit different method. So what we would like to use is an ease function. So easing is simply taking the value that we input. So for example, x from 0 to 1, a linear x value. And we want to use some function, for example, a quad function, to generate a different value out of it, so a different line to ease it or to smooth it. So what we can see here is that when we input an x value and our x's are from 0 to 1, we can have this smooth or eased in uh, for the function, and then we are going to go upwards, and at the end for 1 we are going to still receive the 1 value. And this will create our plateaus at the bottom, if we use appropriate quadratic function, we do not need to use the quadratic function, we can use uh, any other power for our calculation, and this will create this uh, first part a bit more smooth, a bit more flat, compared to the further part that has the original noise value of 0.5 or higher. Okay, back in our project, let's right click in the scripts folder and let's create a new c -sharp script. First will be called my noise, and this will be the script that will actually calculate the noise value. Next, we are going to have also the noise settings. So I'm going to right click, create a new C# -sharp script, and I'm going to call it noise settings or noise data. This will be a scriptable object so that we can more easily test and save the result of our generations. For example, to test different combinations of the parameters for our noise function. So, right now, we want to open our MyNoise class. Okay. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to delete start and update. And this will be not a model behavior. This will be a static class. So, let's add the keyword static. Now, in our MyNoise class, we will need to, first of all, calculate the octave Perlin noise. So to do this, we are going to have a separate method. I will paste it. You can copy it from the GitHub. And this will be called public static float octave Perlin. And this will take the float x and float z value, as well as our noise settings. Now, the x and z value are simply the coordinates for our point. And the noise settings will be the settings that we want to use for calculating our noise using mathf.perlinnoise function. Now, first of all, we will need to have the noise zoom uh, field that will allow us to zoom in or out of the Perlin noise function so that we can see more or less hills in our output. 
I'm going to right click on it, quick action and generate this field inside our uh, noise settings. And this should generate our, our noise zoom. And I'm going to calculate it for X and Z value. And just for safety, I will add it so that we have, we are sure that we do not have integer since our math f dot noise will generate always the same value for int values. So for one, two, three, and four, this will generate 0 0.46 or something like this. So to avoid this, I'm going to multiply this by a very small number, so 0 0.01, and then add it at the end to ensure that we do not have an integer value. Next, we'll have float value total, which will be the total value of our noise. Frequency for the start will be 1, and amplitude for the start will be 1. Last field that we have is a float amplitude sum, so we need to normalize our value to be again between 0 and 1. So if you are adding the noise values, we're going to some, at some point go beyond 1. So we want to again put it back inside the range of 0 and 1 values. And what we are going to do is loop for each i equals 0 till i equals settings.octaves. And this is the number of octaves that we want to use. Again, I'm going to right click quick actions and generate this field inside our noise settings. This will be an integer value. Next, we're going to calculate the total plus equals mathf.perlin noise. And this is our Perlin noise that we have used previously. But now, instead of uh, calling it in our biome generator and adding all those parameters, we are going to use this inside our octave Perlin uh, method. And what we will want to have is in our settings, we are going to have the offset, which will be the offset for our noise settings. Again, right click. Quick actions and we are going to generate this offset. This should end up as an object. We are going to modify the type later on. And we are going to have the setting world offset. Right click, generate, and we are going to generate it. Okay. And we are going to maybe basically have the vector 2 ints. And we are going to have the offset for this noise settings. As well as the world offset. So that we can include our seed offset in our generation. So we add the basic offset, the world offset, and the x value that we have passed here, and we are multiplying it by the frequency. So this will be our x value, and we are going to basically do the same for the z value, but since we are using the vector 2s, we have y's instead of z's, but basically this is our z value for our Perlin noise. Next, to include our amplitude, we are going to multiply our Perlin noise by the amplitude, and this will give us the proper noise value. And at the end, we are going to sum the amplitudes so that we can uh, include this to normalize our value. And we are going to multiply the amplitude by the persistence value inside our settings. This will be a float value, so right click, quick actions, and generate it. And this will be a value of persistence. So uh, if we divide the amplitude by 2 or multiply it by 2, it will give us different results. And we are going to multiply the frequency by 2 to get a higher level frequency. And at the end, we are going to return a value of the total value of the noise, so the sum of the noise, divided by the sum of the amplitude, again, to normalize the result between 0 and 1. Now, since we have some errors, we are going to need to go to the noise settings, right-click on it, Go to the definition and we are in our noise settings uh, class. Now let's simply change those into vector to ints. So let's define them as vector to int and vector to int. And since we want to see those parameters, let's change the internal to be public. To quickly change it, we can uh, select it and click Ctrl F. So this is a find menu where we can find the next instance of the string here and we can extend it. And let's change it to be public. And now what we can do is select this icon, replace all. And now we are going to replace all the strings that call internal into all the strings that call public. And now we can expose those parameters in the inspector. Let's lead the start and update. We are going to convert this new settings class into a scriptable object soon. Let's save it. Let's go back to our my noise. Great. Now beside this method, we will have also another method. Again, this will be a public static float, and now this will be remap value. So what we will want to have is a way to remap our value from the range, so the minimum and max of this range. So for example, we want to remap our 0 to 1 noise value. So we are going to input 0 as minimum value, 1 and as max value. 
to another range. So we want to, for example, map it to zero to the height of our chunk so that we can get the uh, height of our terrain for this particular position in our on our map. Next, we are going to have a variation of it just to make our life a bit easier. Remap value 0, 1. It will only take value that is in range 0 and 1, and it will output a value in range output min and output max. Another method that we will need to have is a way to remap the value and cast it to an int. And this is already using the remap value 0, 1, and this is casting it as an int value. Okay, and last method that we will have here is the redistribution, so this is in. So what we want to have is a way to create our plateaus, and we want to uh, get our noise value as a float value and noise settings, and we are going to simply return math.pow, and we are going to uh, raise the noise to some specific power. We are going to have a redistribution modifier, some small value to multiply our noise to get better results. So right click, quick actions, and let's generate it. This should be a float value. And we are going to have an exponent value. So to which exponent we should rise it. And again, this will be the parameters that we can set and tweak to our liking. So right click, quick actions, and let's generate variable and generate field inside our noise settings as the exponent. And this should be good. Great. So last thing that we will need to do in this video before we can test the results is to make our noise settings into a scriptable object. What we can do is right click on it and go to the definition and we have our new values. Let's change the internal to be public so we can see them in the inspector. Of course we could add serialized field attribute to those. And now let's make it into a scriptable object by changing the inheritance from mono behavior to scriptable object. Okay. We have it here, and we are going to add an attribute create asset menu, and we can add the name to it. So let's call file name equals noise settings. Okay, and we are going to add a menu name. So we need to add comma menu name, and we are going to pass the menu name as data, and we are going to pass uh, to name it noise settings. Okay, and let's finish the quote uh, the, with the quote so that we now have those parameters set in the create asset menu attribute. So select file and save all and go back to Unity. Okay, we can right click on it, create. We have this new menu or new uh, tab data, and we have our block data and the noise settings. And we can input here the data for our noise settings so that we can tweak it and play around with it and have it saved securely in a scriptable object. For now, that's it. In the next video, we are going to make use of our My Noise class to generate a better looking landscape. See you in the next video.